good time roll. Oh, let the good time roll. We don't care if you're young or old. Get together, let the good times roll. Right folks, it is Tuesday the 4th of June I've got no idea what day I'm on, I can't remember Day 20-odd-ish, 30-odd-ish, something like that But I'm now in Finland No biker salute lives everywhere, it's great uh, Yeah, I'm now in Finland uh, I'm on my way down to Helsinki I just thought I'd stop and give a bit of a report because there's, there's not really a hell of a lot to, to, to show you in Finland. It is thousands and thousands and thousands of square miles of forest and the occasional car, not many. Um, but yeah, that's all it is. Quite, it looks quite flat. The north is quite hilly, the border with Norway. Uh, but then as you come down, as you work your way down through the country, it's just, it's just a sea of, of trees. Um, beautiful place, but uh, watch your fuel because I counted the other day there was some like almost 90 miles in between fuel stops on the road that I was on. And this morning I'd done 155 miles on my tank, which I think is a record for me uh, before I found a petrol station. Thank God for the Garmin Zumo because it, it led me to one off the main road. But um, yeah, good, I'm making good progress. I should be in Helsinki for about 7 o'clock tonight. And I've got myself booked into a hostel for three nights so I can batter on, get the next vid done, get the next blog post done, um, do a few updates on the, uh, the Garmin map for Russia. I meet Andy McGrath, um, get my passport, Russian visa, Mongolian visa, and then we're good to go. And I'm going to have a little wander around Helsinki as well, which will be for the next vid. But uh, yeah, all going well. Loving it. This is the first day of your life. The first day of your strife. The first day of your life. We got the Russian visas. Lassie Lurama from Bridgestone, Finland, got in touch and kindly met me on my first morning in the city. Afterwards, I went for a wander around Helsinki, doing some sightseeing before I met up with Andy McGrath to pick up my passport and have some beers. As you can see, I'm uh, here in Perita at the old road race circuit where in 2000 Joey Dunlop sadly lost his life. As you can see, there's a memorial to him here, and uh, I just thought I'd stop by and pay my respects.
that's something you see a lot of in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Hundreds of miles of straight road. Hey there folks. Uh, it is the end of day 33 I think. It's the 10th of June. I think this is day 33. And I am halfway down Slovakia. Um, yeah, about halfway down Slovakia, right in the far east. Uh, so I've got Ur Ukraine to the east of me, Poland north, Hungary south. So tomorrow we'll be down through Slovakia into Hungary, uh, basically cutting through the northeast of Hungary, uh, across into Romania, and the target for tomorrow night is the Transvaal Garrison. Um, so then I'll spend the next day playing, excuse me, playing on the Transvaal Garrison. Uh, spend the night uh, in a hotel at the top of the Transfer Garrison and then from there I'll make my way up through Moldova into U Ukraine heading for Kiev and then from Kiev I will head up to Moscow. My Russian visa doesn't allow me entry until the 16th so that should tie in quite nicely. Um, not really in fact, in all honesty, apart from Joy Dunlop's memorial uh, in Tallinn, I don't think I've got the camera out since. Uh, it has just been um, soul-destroying, to be perfectly honest with you, after the incredible surroundings in Norway, Scandinavia, coming down to Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Lith Lithuania has started to improve a bit, but Estonia and Latvia from what I saw anyway um, it's just a straight line the road, you know, it literally is a straight line south, I've been told about it and they're not lying been on a bit of a downer since since leaving Scandinavia to be honest with you it's weird, on, on a trip like this if you stay any place for a few days you know, you start to you start to get a feel for a place and you know, you, you're just starting to figure out how the system works in that place, what the protocols are, and then you have to move on. And uh, you know, I had almost, in fact, probably just over two weeks in Norway, and it, it, it's no secret I love the place. The people were fantastic, but you, you're kind of having a bit of a bubble there because everybody does speak English, and everyone is so friendly. So that when you leave somewhere like that, Scandinavia on the whole is like that. So when you leave somewhere like that, you come into another country sort of southern Estonia, not everybody speaks English, Latvia, Lithuania, there's still a lot of English, but the southern Lithuania in particular, you know, I started to find that the English was, wasn't very prevalent at all, um, and it's all Russian now, um, so you know, you, you start to feel, you start to feel a little bit isolated again, but never mind, there's harder ways to make a living I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> Um, today coming into Slovakia, I've been in Slovakia for about two or three hours now. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. Uh, very like Eastern France, very like uh, sort of Alpine Germany, so sort of black forest area. Very good, the roads are nice and twisty. Uh, the surface isn't great though, that's the only thing, very bumpy. But um, no, no, it's looking good, it's looking good. Tomorrow we'll head down through Slovakia and into Hungary and then Romania. So, looking forward to it folks. I just thought I'd let you see, this is the wee place I've found. I was just getting ready to wild camp tonight actually, because um, I wasn't seeing any signs for camping or hotels, motels or anything. And uh, I came around the corner and saw a sign for, for camping, followed it up a track and mm, came to this place, 10 euros. You know, not camping, but uh, I tell you what, it's warm, it's dry, that'll do me nicely. Alright folks, I've been seeing these since Poland. I think they're, are they cranes or storks? I just remember that cartoon with the one that was always chasing the little uh, dragonfly. But they're everywhere and they build these little platforms on top of the telegraph poles. And they're all, all over, all along the roadside. 
Incredible. Well, I suppose that's what I get for uh, telling the sat-nav to avoid toll roads and motorways. Um, this should be a ferry, but as you can see, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, I'm now in Hungary, just crossed into Hungary from uh, Slovakia, and I'm just cutting through the, the north-east uh, of Hungary into Romania. Well, that was a plan. I've got to try and figure out a different way now, so it could be a long day. And there's loads of mozzies everywhere. Yes folks, that is a road, that's not a go-kart track, that's a road. Oh hiya folks, uh, it's day 34 I think, I am about 80 miles from the start of the transfer garrison. Hopefully I'll get that done today uh, and um, then be heading north again up through Moldova and Ukraine on the way to Moscow. Um, as you can see it's raining again, gutted. Hopefully it will stop by the time we get to the transfer garrison. A uh, couple of things I need to talk about. Hitchhikers. Eastern Europe, everyone's hitchhiking. There's loads of them everywhere. That's one of the things. Lorry drivers. Romanian, Slovakian lorry drivers. They border on the psychopathic. Absolutely insane. The overtake some of them put on are where well, they're beyond belief and I just wish this bloody GoPro would work so that I could get some onboard footage of it. I've nearly been wiped out umpteen times, had to go right off the road into the verge. Um, mad. GoPro, I don't know what's going on with it. I've, I've, I've done the firmware update. Uh, I thought that had solved the problem. But it, it keeps recording for say 4 to 10 seconds and then I just get a thing called saying low speed card and it can't be the card because the card's the fastest one you can get. Um, it's class 10, it's a, a 40 megabyte per second, all the techie geeky stuff that you need. It's a SanDisk, SanDisk Extreme card and it's been fine before. All that onboard footage you've seen, that's all on the same card. So I don't know what's going on with it. It keeps discharging the battery as well. I'll charge it up all night pop it in, go to switch it on the next day, flat as a pancake. Had enough, it better be working by the time I do the transfer garrison. But anyway, rock on. Well folks, to say I'm gutted is an understatement. Finally got to the transfer garrison. It's been raining on and off all the way here. I get here obviously up into the uh, up into the mountains and it's foggy as bits. I mean look, this doesn't look too bad but uh, the sections I've come in and you really are struggling to see 10 feet in front of you. Um, I'm supposed to be showing you the fantastic views up here. You've probably seen them on Top Gear. Well, try and find it on Dave and have a look because uh, you can't see anything out here as I'm sure you're seeing now. Uh, but never mind, um, I've got myself a hotel tonight, uh, I pre-booked it, it's about halfway along, so I should be getting there tonight. I'm going to stop off tonight, get there nice and early, hopefully, give the bike, uh, the beast is in dire need of a wash. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen her this mock it, she's absolutely bogging. Starting to make a lot of rumblings and crackling noises and things at the moment, which I think is just down to the pure amount of dirt that's in the, in the bearings and in the chain and everywhere like that. So I'm going to give her a good old bit of clean, bit of TLC tonight, get all the kit off, give it a good old clean uh, and uh, have myself um, a nice easy night hopefully, if I don't break down on the way there. And then tomorrow hopefully this fog's lifted and I'll attack it again. The bloody GoPro is still not working. Um, Bloody expensive brick, that's all that thing is at the moment, I'm gutted. And cheers GoPro, thanks to your customer services, I've emailed you and I've tweeted you and nothing. Thank you. I'm having a bit of a mum rah, sorry.
believe it. You're a natural, John. You're a natural. Wherever in the world, good people, bad people. Wherever. Mm. Romania, no bad people at all. No. no Romania is... Romania yeah. is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. If you... If you make time to talk to people, people talk to you. They're, they're very nice, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I have I have loved Romania. It, it, it's just been raining lots since I came in, so I haven't been able to get the camera out and take pictures of of yeah. where I have been. But uh, hopefully tomorrow, if, if it's good weather, I can. Uh, tomorrow weather is good. It's good. It's good. TV. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> the TV, whoever, tomorrow is good. It's good. Uh, is good. Sunshine. Okay. Well, tomorrow I uh, I go down and do the rest of the trans and then I come back and do it all the way up to Katusuara. Katusuara? Yeah. yeah. And then I head to uh, Moldova. In, and then in Romania, Katusuara. Right. Uh, I go there <laughs> <laughs> and then I head to uh, Moldova and then Ukraine so maybe two days to U Ukraine maybe and then Moscow yeah. your journey is single hmm? your journey uh, journey mm -hmm. cut your uh, just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just, you are. just me. Just me on, yeah. on the bike. Yeah, the bike. <laughs> yeah. I like, no? I know. I, I like too, but uh, after weeks and weeks, months and months and months, you know, it is nice to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Trika. Trika? Trika, Trika. Trika. And that's yeah. the drink. Uh, Din Pruna. Traditional Romanian drink uh, from prunes. Prunes. It's good. It tastes a lot like uh, like a good whiskey. Right, morning, folks. This is us at the uh, Vidraru Dam. Uh, pretty much at the start, the southern end of the Transvagarisan Highway. I've already done it this morning from the north, but I had to go south in order to get some fuel. So we'll do it again now. I've got the GoPro working, hopefully. So you'll see it. It's uh, bumpy, to say the least.
Right, that's the Transvagaris in done. I can tick that one off my list. Um, the plan was to head into Moldova um, and cross through Moldova into Ukraine and up to Moscow. But there's two things. One is the bike is making some rattling noises which sound mighty familiar to me to the noises they made in northern Italy before the rear bearings went. Um, being a bit of rumbling coming up through the foot pegs, I've given the chain a damn good lubing and um, also the front and rear bearings, uh, I've given them a bit of a, a lubing. Whether you're supposed to or not, I don't know. But I've done that. Seems to be okay at the moment, but I just don't want to ris run the risk of getting caught somewhere like Moldova. Uh, so I'm going to make a break for the Ukrainian border today, hopefully get into Ukraine. And then I'm going to aim for Kiev. Uh, and if the bearings are still lasting by Kiev, from there I will go up into Moscow. Um, the visa allows me entry to Russia from the 16th onwards. So that will be the plan over the next few days, head to Moscow. Met cracking bloke yesterday at that Piskel Negro Hotel. Um, John, brilliant, brilliant bloke, fantastic guy. Um, really lifted me right up again. It, it's just so good to meet people. Just normal, decent people. Um, and there's plenty of them around. Romania is full of them. I mean, today everyone's been waving. It's been brilliant. My spirits have been down a little bit, I think, because I'd spent four or five days on my own and gone from the generosity of, of Scandinavia to Far Eastern Europe, where people are a lot more reserved. And uh, to be honest, I'd just been on the bike going for it. I hadn't really been stopping. So it's my own fault. But uh, yesterday, meeting John, brilliant. Um, fantastic bloke. Helped me wash the bike. Even cooked me dinner. Brilliant, lovely guy, and if you ever come to Transfer Garrison High, uh, Highway in Romania, stay at the Hotel Piscal Negru. I'll put the website up now for you, and uh, ask for John and tell him uh, Scottish biker Bruce says hello, okay? And he'll look after you. Well, I can't quite believe that. Uh, that's us in Ukraine. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. Nicest pie, really decent folk. Um, yeah, no issues with uh, fines to pay, anything like that. Uh, brilliant. Didn't actually even realise I'd got into Ukraine. I thought I was still going through Romania. But lovely job. Um, it is half four, so I don't think I'm going to manage to get to Kiev tonight. I'll uh, give it some lemon and see if I can. Uh, but otherwise, find somewhere on the way. I hope you can hear me, I've, I've got a Ukrainian disco going on outside. Uh, I'm in Ukraine, obviously, over the moon. Um, I think that has got to be the easiest border crossing I've ever gone through. I was expecting the worst, to be honest. Not as bad as Russell, but I was expecting having to hand over a few bob. And um, it, it being a little bit finickety. I made a bit of a boo to begin with and uh, trusted the sat nav. And it took me into Moldova. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to Moldova until I'd gone through the Romanian side of the border, which was brilliant, no problems at all. I uh, went over a bridge and it said, welcome to Moldova. I thought, oh, well, this isn't right. Uh, and lo and behold, that was the bureaucratic border. Um, very finicky there. You brought up about insurance. Um, you have to buy your green card insurance, either beforehand or on the border. But there was nobody available. so. Uh, it was going down the, the lines of, uh, I think I was probably going to have to hand over quite a bit more than I should. Um, so I said, well, can I go back to Romania and get the insurance? So I just shrugged his shoulders. So uh, I turned around, went back to Romania, and then took a two and a half, maybe three hour detour to go and do the border, which I meant to do, which is up at uh, Seret, I think it's called, up in the north. I did that and I didn't even know I'd gone through the Ukrainian border to be honest with you. Um, the Romanian one was good as gold, no problems at all as, as it is when you come into Romania from Hungary, again no issues. 
Um, and I came up to uh, another little booth and I assumed that that was the customs part of Romania. But no, that was the Ukraine. So I um, handed over my passport, did that. Um, was directed to another customs place uh, by a U Ukrainian soldier and he stamped my bit of paper and, and asked me to do a wheelie <laughs> and I wheelied into the Ukraine um, to some rousing applause from the old Bill which is a bit weird uh, and that was it, I was in 45 minutes from start to finish, bang, straight in but the roads over here I think they are actually the worst I've come across I think it wins the title so far some sections of it are first gear, five miles an hour. Um, it's not even a road anymore. Uh, it reminded me a lot of the, the last little stretch before Rosso, uh, but obviously with much nicer memories. Um, I am about 200 miles from Kiev. I was gonna ride through the night, but I just thought there's no point, not with a tinted visor and on roads like that. Um, so, came across this place, uh, roadside motel. Very, very helpful, friendly people. The security guard has um, just let me use the staff car park to put the bike away. And he's uh, brought a sleeping bag that back down to the back gate and he's going to sleep there watching the bike. <laughs> anyway, um, fantastic people so far, as everybody has been everywhere. Everybody always warns you about their neighbour. That's one thing I've noticed. Um, but everybody has been spot on, touch wood. Uh, yeah, brilliant. I really feel like I'm, I'm on this now, a second across to the U Ukraine, completely different feeling. You're not on a, you're not on a road, trip, road trip now, it's, it is an adventure and uh, this is venturing into the unknown for me and uh, I am loving it. But God, I need a shower. Thank you, folks. And we're here. This will make you a book. I've just washed my riding kit for the first time in about four days. Yeah, it's only about four days. That's a pair of socks, my boxers, and my riding top. Look at the state of that water. Whew, no wonder I was kicking up. Right behind me is the Golden Gate, uh, and that's the uh, part of the original walls of the original city of Kiev. Um, yeah, it's on the World Heritage List. Why study? Wish I'd kept up the old boogie woogie. Could have had a tickle. Right, I'm in the motherland. I'm in Russia. Um, pretty painless, to be honest with you. Quite straightforward. Uh, started at the Ukrainian side, quarter past one. Uh, and I left there about five to three uh, by the time I'd finished at the Russian side. So uh, it's not bad, what, just under two hours, which is not bad. Uh, typical Soviet, really, quite bureaucratic, but um, everything's by the book. Uh, they're quite cold faced to begin with, but you know, they're very, they are helpful. Um, I don't speak any Russian, so they had no choice but to help, but they were, they were brilliant, they were really, really decent. I actually had one of the uh, Russian police customs guys, he basically babysat me through the uh, the form filling side of it, so God knows what I've ticked and what I've said, but uh, I got through. Um, it is really muggy, I think there's going to be a storm. 
It's quite grey over there. I'm heading for Moscow. Won't hit Moscow tonight, so I'll be looking, probably looking to camp somewhere tonight. But I'm in Russia, loving it. I'm glad you haven't got smelly vision. It stinks in here. Look at all those mozzies. Jesus. I'm under siege here. Well, evening folks. It is the end of day 40. Uh, and I'm now in Russia. I'm camped in a forest just outside Bryansk, I think is the name of the place. It's about 250, 300 odd miles south of uh, Moscow. I'm sorry I'm scratching all the time, this place is besieged with mozzies, they're everywhere and they, they just ate me as I set the tent up. But anyway, um, quick rundown as to where we are now then, so that's when we started Russia, this is like the next phase, done Europe now, um, I think that's 18 countries, uh, just under 11,000 miles in the 40 days, in fact that's maybe 19 countries now, so I've already beaten trip one. Uh, that was 41 days, uh, I think it was something like 16 countries, and I did just under 10,000 miles on that one. So, uh, yeah, making ground now. Um, looking forward to hit Moscow tomorrow, all being good. Um, first part of the roads into into Russia, um, they were badish, nowhere near as bad as Ukraine. But they are very bumpy, uh, concrete roads, and uh, you know it's like sort of six meter length slabs. So it's like corrugations. You know, you're just continually going over these things, and there's lots and lots and lots of overbanding and repair work being done. So the suspension and the tires on the bike were taking a pounding, uh, as they have done since God, since leaving Poland, really, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania. Um, the first part of Romania and then the first part of Ukraine to Kiev uh, the roads were, I mean Ukraine the, r the roads were shocking, really bad but there's going to be worse to come I'm sure but the beast is holding out, uh, she's sounding quite rough now though in dire need of uh, a good wash and a proper service but she'll get that in Moscow um, booked in at the mud factory and I spoke with uh, Bridgestone and Bob Collins at FWR so the tyres should be arriving um, 19th, maybe the 20th they'll get to mud factory so she'll have some new boots on her too for the next stage can't wait right, no night, no, shattered stay safe right, that's the bike dropped off uh, with Vladimir at mud factory and now it's uh, up into town to do some sightseeing, I'm about Four hours late. 